Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to look at something incredibly important, which is the importance of controlling the white ball. So obviously we probably know that's important, but I think in snooker videos, especially in coaching, we talk a lot about straight cueing and really developing that straight cueing action. But have you ever wondered why you get that player that when you're looking in the club, you might be looking at a certain player and thinking, they haven't really got a very good technique, but they can make lots of good breaks. And that is because they're able to control the cue ball very accurately. So in this video, we're going to look at the importance of controlling the white ball. Right, so to show you what I mean about controlling the cue ball here, I've set myself up with a shot on the pink. I'm pretty much straight here, might have a slight angle, and actually players often find it easier to pop the ball if they've just got that little slight angle. But lots of players here would find that, well, I'm on the pink, as long as I just roll this shot forward, so I've just got to pop the pink and just let the white just roll forward, I'm going to be on choice of one of these reds. So if I use a red on the pink spot, so I'm going to put a ball there again. So why is it that all of a sudden, if I put the white higher up like this, the shot completely changes? So obviously, the things that are now complicating this shot is I've now got a potting angle to judge. So although the distance between the white and this red is no different when the white is here or if it's here, the distance is the same, but I've now got to pick out exactly the correct angle. The other thing I've also introduced is it's now very important that I time this shot correctly. So what we mean by that is I've now got to put some spin on the white so that I control it for the next ball and that means it's got to be hit much more accurately at the correct pace. So what I'm actually trying to do is I'm trying to pop this red and bring the white somewhere down into this nice area for a choice of the next one of the reds. So obviously this red I'm potting would be the pink. So I've got to now judge this pot, get my white so that it lands in this nice area and you can see the key to break building is exactly what I've just done there. My white is very, very close to this next red ball that I need to pop. That then is going to make it easier to pop the red, and it's also going to make it much easier to control the white to get onto my next shot, which in this case will be a colour. Now this takes us on to the importance of learning your potting angles around the table. I'll often see players that are doing a line-up, maybe they're doing an open table, and you'll see them, they always go for the pot that's pretty much straight, or maybe the one that's got a little bit of an angle on. Now, that's absolutely fine, but it's only really a short-term goal, because snooker is all about leaving angles, and then it means you can easily manoeuvre the white around the table. When we've got straight shots, we can only take the white forwards or backwards, and it's very restrictive in terms of positional play. And this takes us back to why you see that player in the club that you go, well, they've, they've got a technique that's nowhere near as neat as mine. I'm trying really hard to cue straight and keep still. And that's because that player is very good at manoeuvring the white for their next shot. So the pot on this red, that, so we've got a red here on the pink spot. So the pot on this ball is, just like we've already looked at, it's no more difficult from when it's straight to when it's got an angle here. In terms of the straight cueing, the distance between the white and red is exactly the same. It's just that when we've got this angle, we've now introduced timing onto the shot. So that means I've got to hit the correct point on the cue ball and I've got to hit the correct speed to get the white to do exactly what I want it to do. So let's have a look at some of the common ways now that this could go wrong. So obviously, this is effectively a pink, so I'm trying to get on one of the next reds. So let's say I go a bit too low. So I've potted the red, but a little bit too low on the cue ball and I end up very, very close to the side cushion here. Now, I could potentially still pop one of these red balls, but I'm much closer to the side cushion than I would like. So, let's say I try now to go a little bit higher on the white. So, I say, okay, I don't want to finish by that side cushion. So, let's go a little bit higher on the white, so just below centre. And I've delivered that one, and this is the problem now. So, I've delivered the shot, gone a bit higher so that I didn't go to this side cushion but I've now lost the white down here. So this is where the timing of the shot now becomes very important because we need to know where do we hit on the white so that we can control this white very well and leave, uh, leave ourselves a nice easy shot on the next ball. So we know we need to force ourselves out of our comfort zone and stop going for that absolutely straight ball or the one that is just off straight. And then the other thing we need to do is start to understand exactly how to control this white ball. 
So let's say that I play right at the bottom of the white here and I'm going to hit the shot quite firm. So they're at seven or eight in terms of power. Okay, so we can see that that's quite a powerful shot. The white has come right back across the table. Not really that useful to us. Even if we did play a shot from here, it wouldn't be very good to get on one of the, to get from the red again to the next color. So let's try that same shot and let's go right at the bottom of the white again, but let's go much, much softer. So I'm gonna hit very soft now, about one or a two. Okay, so not very hard at all. The red has only just reached the pocket. I've been very lucky there in terms of hitting the other red and managing to land on another one there with a, a cannon. So you wouldn't want to hit it that soft. So what about somewhere in between those two? So let's try, okay, let's go about a medium pace then right at the bottom of the white. And you go, ah, all of a sudden, I've hit the same place on the white for all three of those shots and I've got three totally different reactions. One where I came right back across the table, one where I didn't get any spin on and the white hit the red just below the, the one I was potting and then this one where I've got the white in a lovely position for my next shot. So important there to know that you've got two things that are changing where the cue ball is going. You've got where we strike on the cue ball, so that can be height or obviously left and right on the cue ball for side spin, but no need to worry about that too much here. And then you've got the power that you're using as well, which is very important. So those two things can affect where the cue ball is going. So when you're trying to learn these, these positional shots and controlling the cue ball very accurately, it's always good, I think, to experiment with, right, I'm gonna play 10 or 15 of these shots, let me hit quite a few of them, and I'll try the same place on the white, but what I'll do is I'll try different power each time, and that'll speed up your learning. Try some really firm, try some a lot softer, try some medium power shots, try some where you play 10 shots and you try to hit them exactly the same each time, and you'll actually realize that even the ones where you feel like you're hitting them exactly the same, you'll probably get a little variation in terms of where the white goes. But the more you do that, you'll start to hit them more and more accurately and control the white better. Okay, so I'm gonna clear this five red line up here. And we're not gonna watch the whole video shot by shot, I'm gonna speed the video up. But then we're just gonna look at each individual shot and where the white ball landed on each pot. So snooker is all about controlling this white, leaving each shot as simple as it can possibly be. And this little section here will just highlight what I'm actually doing with controlling this white ball and how I'm trying to make each shot as easy as I possibly can. Now, hopefully you can see the point I'm trying to make there, that I don't clear that exercise there because I'm potting lots of outrageous balls and I'm firing in long balls from all over the place. It's nothing to do with that. It's not a supreme level of straight cue in that I absolutely just pot everything in front of me. It's more to do with the fact that I'm leaving myself lots of easy shots and then it means that it's much easier to pot the ball in front of me and then obviously it's also much easier then to manoeuvre the white for the next ball again. So really in that break there, there was only the shot on the yellow that was one shot that I thought, okay, this has to be cued correctly. And as long as I pop this, I'm back in good position. From there, I'd got a good shot on the green, the brown, the blue, the pink and the black again there. So it's all about getting better at your cue ball control. So just like I showed you in this video, it's a good idea to set yourself up with some routines where you've got the same shot and you're trying to play on a group of red. So let's say, just like I did in this video, you're playing the pink, you're trying to play for a line of reds. Set yourself up in that position and practice from that same position, trying some different speeds and some different positions on the cue ball and see whether you can start to control that cue ball more accurately. And also, just as I said, judging those potting angles all around the table are very important as well. So I've got videos about potting angles. So if you haven't seen those, have a look at those and that'll really help you to start improving your game.
And as always, everybody, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give the video a like. If you're new to this channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. That just really helps me to keep all this content coming regularly. And I do try and make a new upload every single week. For anyone that's interested in any personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions, I'm helping players on this table to improve their game all the time. So please get in touch with me and I'd love to help with your game. And as always, catch you in the next one, everybody. Cheers.